the Catalog at Museum demo series, where we show you how to master your museum plan and thrive on your new CMS, giving you the step-by-step -step instructions you need to care for your collections, communicate with your team, and elevate your institution. Hi everyone, and welcome to chapter one of the Catalog at Museum demo series. Today we'll cover the fundamentals of record creation and Catalog it, as we start by observing a finished entry and later create our very own. From assigning a classification to describing an item's key properties, we'll cover data entry and catalog its comprehensive and complete data fields and walk you through establishing accessions and location information in the database. With that, I'll hand it over to catalog it co-founder and product expert, Dan. Dan, take it away. Well, thank you, Sasha. So to begin with here, we're at our All Entries screen. All Entries is a special kind of folder in Catalog It that literally contains your entire catalog. You can browse through it like this, but more importantly, you can search through it with the search function up here by clicking on this magnifying glass icon here. It opens up a search bar. You can search through your entries uh, by any piece of text that's included in the entry. You can use individual words or words separate of the plus sign to find entries that include all those words, or you can use a string of words and quotes. Let's take a look at an entry in Catalog. I'm going to select this one here. It's a print, the birthplace of William Shakespeare. First thing you might notice is that there's multiple images. There's no limit to the number of images or the size of images that you attach to an entry in Catalog. And you can also see that this is a fairly well documented piece. You see a variety of types of data in here. This uh, description field is a free text field. And then you see a number of fields with these little tags on it. Now these are profile fields in Catalog. And these, I can click on any one of these and see the relationship. Uh, I've got to whatever this piece of data is to anything else in my catalog. Let's go back and talk about creating a new entry in Catalog. Now to create a new entry, scroll down here to the bottom right hand corner to this orange plus. This is the create entry button in Catalog. When I select it, I get a few options here. I can use a photo that's stored someplace in my photo files. I can use a PDF or Word or Excel document. I can attach, uh, I can create an entry with no media at all and come back and attach images later on. If I'm on my phone or tablet, I have a fourth option, and that's to actually use the camera on my, uh, on my device to, to begin documenting the entry. Now, in this case, I've selected photo, and it's opened up my finder here, and I just need to find the image of the item I'm working on, that it's this uh, small iron here. So the first thing I have to do is give it a name. You saw in the last field that we can create an entry without a, an image, but a name is required call this a coal iron, and now I can do a little manipulation to the image. Now the unaltered uh, image, just as I've uploaded, is what will always be stored and available to me in Catalog. But here I can do a little bit of manipulation. I could rotate if I needed to. I could crop it if I needed to. This one actually doesn't need to be cropped. And I've got these gray bars where I can drag and, and, and uh, move the image to how it's going to appear in my thumbnail going forward. I'll just center it about like this. Now when I select Next, Catalog is going to say, what sort of an object is this? What kind of a classification would you like to use to document it? We have a wide variety of authoritative classifications in Catalog to choose from. You just want to select the one that's the most appropriate for the item you're working on. In this case, I'm going to select Object Artifact and select Done at this level. Now I'm ready to go ahead and start documenting my item here. And you can see that there's a wide array of fields available for you in Catalog. Each one of these expansion panels includes additional fields that allow you to document your item in even greater detail. You see there's a variety of types of fields as well in Catalog. I've got text fields such as description, use, context, and I've got fields that include this ellipses afterwards. These are profile fields in Catalog. And these are places where you can create those kind of relationships. For instance, if this iron belonged to a particular collection, I can select my drop-down list here and attach it to that collection. I'm going to begin at the accession level here. So when I select the expansion panel here, it opens up, and here's where I can attach my accession record. Again, it's an ellipses uh, here, so that means it's a drop-down field. And when I select that, I see the list of my available uh, existing accessions. And if it was a part of an existing accession, why well, I just select it there. It's actually a new accession, so I'm going to click the plus here to create a new record. Catalog will automatically assign my next highest accession record using the, the trinomial system that's most common. Uh, with the year, the batch, and then the item numbers uh, subsequently afterwards. If you're using a different uh, numbering pattern, so long as it's a, a regular pattern, we can likely incorporate it into Catalog It. I need to describe my item. Who proposed it? Who approved it? How did we acquire it? In this case, I'm going to select that it was a gift. Who's the source or donor? I just have to start to type in a few letters of the name. 
and I will find her. If there's multiple, I can attach multiple here. If this is an entity, I can state who the contact was at the entity, etc. And so on. I can continue to document the full accession record here, all the way down to the credit line. I can also track the status of the accession over time. Uh, for instance, this is a, this. Uh, I'm going to say that this one's actually in process now. I'm going to click my calendar here and select as of today's date. And I can attach additional notes. And I can attach additional statuses over time so I can track the, move, the, the progress of this accession as it works its way through our system here. And importantly, down here in the corner is the uh, paperclip icon where you can attach all your documentation here. You could attach, uh, for instance, copies of correspondence with the donor, your donor gift form, uh, maybe appraisal records or shipping records. And you can also attach images as well. Images can be very handy within an accession record. I'm just going to go ahead and click Create here. Okay, so now here I've assigned my accession record 2020.5, and as I continue to document the rest of the irons out of the succession group, Catalogit will continue to assign uh, the additional uh, numbers here, 2020.5.1 for this first one, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 for the, the consecutive irons. I'm going to close this expansion panel, and let's go down here to Lexicon. Now, Lexicon is where your controlled vocabularies live, and Catalogit comes pre-populated with the nomenclature 4.0, as well as the Library of Congress, the source for graphic materials for your subject terms. We've also got fields here for capturing your Getty terms. Let's go ahead and add a new nomenclature term. We've made that particularly easy in Catalog. So I'm going to select this, and I get a search bar. And what I have to do is just enter in there what, is, what it is I'm working on. In this case, it's the iron. So I'll type in iron and hit enter. And I get the list of all the various irons that are included in the nomenclature system. And I just have to look for the one that's the most appropriate and select it and catalog it populates the full nomenclature hierarchy. And let's move down to location. Location fields in catalog it are hierarchical, which makes it particularly easy for you to search for items within any within within the most specific location or the more general location any place within your uh, within your storage. When I select it again it brings up the drop down list of all my available locations. I just have to start to type, type in the location I'm looking for. Now this is in my uh, shelf 2 and I know that it's in my shelf 2 which is in my cabinet 1. So I'll select that. And Later on when we save the record you'll see that the full hierarchy of this storage location is captured in the record here. And I can create a move record as well. I'm going to close that up. And we'll continue along. With the capacity to store a vast range of data points, creating the entries in Catalog it helps you establish the full scope of artistic and historical significance your items hold, while keeping your institution on top of its protocols. Stay with us for the next segment and we'll show you more of these high-level features that you'll be able to use in Catalog it. Visit our support site for product support or browse our general site for additional information.